welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts, and I'm one of the co-founders of our service. And joining me on the morning of Wednesday, the 14th of June, 2023 from Perth is Mr. David Reiki, who's one of the executive directors at Ada Vale Resources, ASX ADD. David, good morning. Good morning, Stuart. David, you've been kicking around uh, uh, the uh, small uh, resources corporate game since uh, you, you finished uh, about a decade at PwC back in the 90s. So you've, you've gathered up a fair bit of experience. I gather you're quite excited about the work you're doing right now with Ada Vale. That's right. I, I think probably I've been in the resource space now for the best part of about 30 years. Um, um, and I, I'd like to think of myself, myself as a bit of a sponge. I've actually sort of been operating in this space. And I think that uh, the, the selection of projects um, uh, and really understanding their their underlying value uh, is, is key to any success in the, in the small cap space. So I think the um, it's duty bound, I think, on, on, on any director to make sure that they're looking at the best ground that they've got and undertaking the work that they uh, they need to do to unlock the value. So essentially, yes, I've been in the space for a while and I've been involved in a few commodities, but the one that seems to shine to me, um, probably like many others, um, is this whole um, uh, battery mineral thematic. And that's actually been uh, probably the driving force as to why we've actually chosen a nickel and alongside something as big as um, what we're seeing in um, Western Tanzania and Kabanga. Yeah, let's talk about that project. Way up in the northwestern part of Tanzania, uh, Kagera region, one of 31 regions of Tanzania, is um, is a, a, a gigantic uh, nickel deposit called Kabunga. That's not your deposit. Uh, belongs to a, a, a company called LifeZone, which is um, is now looking to go public in New York via, via, a, via a SPAC. But we're talking one and a half million tonnes of contained nickel equivalent. Uh, at a at a grade of about, well, the, the nickel grade alone is 2.6%. That, that is a monster of a deposit. To bung the Girani is you, and you've got everything around it. So uh, if, if you don't find nickel on that ground, I'll be very surprised. Well, so will we. we. We've done enough, I think, work to sort of demonstrate that this this belt, this East African um, nickel belt, uh, includes Kabanga. And I think it probably will include, you know, similar lookalike opportunities that we're chasing. Uh, and that's right. I mean, the actual um, area that we, we cover and we effectively... Um, uh, surround Kabanga is approximately um, 1,300 square kilometres. And we think we've chosen wisely with the um, the ground holdings that we've now got. And it's probably been just demonstrated in the work that we've done to actually try and, try and hone in and, and focus in and get that resolution around those spots that we think um, could be hiding the next Kabanga or, the, you know, the, or a similar sort of deposit. And, and you're quite right, um, Stuart, the actual grade of this is it's, it's very globally significant. It may not be the biggest, but I think it's the the, the largest high grade uh, opportunity uh, existing in the world, uh, and it's seen uh, the likes of BHP um, take a very very significant interest in it, and more particularly strategically uh, to develop what they think, like you said, is is going to be many um, uh, many many uh, many 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 tons of nickel at high grade, and I think that's the important thing. So they're not doing big processing um, of large volumes of material. Uh, and that's a feature. So yes, look, we are we're 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 very, we're very blessed with the ground holdings we've got where we are, and I think it's probably more along the lines of the work that we've done to get to the point where we can start uncovering what we think might be the next Kabanga. Right, and it's interesting to me. BHP's decision to invest in in that Kabanga project uh, was was hailed globally. You know, suddenly Tanzania is back in from the cold under under uh, uh, President uh, um, Hassan. But uh, you know, the, now that the the regime is, is is straightforward, someone as big as and globally significant as BHP choosing to invest says the country's open for business. So um so so you're looking good from a from a, 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 a geopolitical risk type stage as well. Very much so. I think the endorsement of um, BHP coming back uh, in um, is that they've done their due diligence. We'd like to think we've done ours, but their investment is going to be over many decades, you know, when they start to get things up and going. And they take uh, these sorts of decisions um, very carefully. Uh, and for us to be, I suppose, a net beneficiary of actually being in that location means that it demonstrates the geopolitical um, stability of the country. But it's also demonstrating that, um, you know, the eyes back on Tanzania you know, half a dozen years ago, you know, it had its issues. Right. Now it's actually seen a, a resurgence and, and a re-emergence out of um, what has been a, a darker darker um, space of, in its time uh, and its history. But we've seen the welcoming of um, negotiation teams, uh, moving projects forward, those that have been moribund, those that hadn't actually um, had the endorsement of the government. There's clear pathways now as to what you need to do with the government. They need to have a 16% interest. Uh, they are taking things very seriously. And I think the... The advent of um, uh, Camilla Harris coming into Tanzania also is an endorsement that um, 
the US is saying, you know, they're, they're, they're cheering from the stand saying, you know, go ahead, Tanzania, and, and find these battery minerals. And nickel seems to be at the very much the forefront there. And that really comes back full circle to what you mentioned before about LifeZone actually seeking listing on the New York Stock Exchange. So there will be a lot more eyes on this particular region. And I think it's um, it's really a, a perfect opportunity, a perfect storm for us to try and take advantage of, in a nice way, of, of the situation that's emerged in Tanzania, but also getting some some eyes on our, our drilling program, which is starting to turn up these massive sulfides, which is exactly what we want. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? I sat down a couple of years ago with your colleague, uh, Alan Ritchie, and uh, we talked about this project. Mm. Meantime, a heck of a lot of gravity and um, and, and EM data to pick the best targets, and uh, and, the, and the first of the diamond drills holes are going down now. Tell me about the the uh, the, the um, choice of uh, Lohama Central as the first uh, prospect to, to drill test. Yeah, look, I normally have the benefit of a, a prop where I can actually point to the particular trends that are seem, seeming to emerge, but... This what we've seen is that Lahuma Central um, itself and above and below it um, uh, sit within a trend. So in in its own right, it's actually a feature of the trend rather than the trend itself. So what we're seeing is that with the um, the the AMT and the gravity and the soils that we've been able to do in and around that area it shows that this trend is probably about eight to ten kilometres long. And the beauty of that is that we know that we're in the right rock types. We've actually been able to demonstrate that with our soils. So the region itself, um, we've focused on Lahuma Central and HEM2, which is a region, like I said, over about 10 Ks, because it demonstrates the prospectivity of massive sulfides, disseminated sulfides, and the right ultramafic rocks, which will host those types of bodies. Importantly, we're using that as a template, and it's been probably to the frustration of everyone, including the board, that we've We've moved ahead very, very carefully and, and diligently, you know, making sure that we've got a number of these different techniques correlating and pointing to those parts of, of this uh, opportunity set, this ground holding, that we think is going to demonstrate the greatest opportunity of, of success. Now, we've done that um, with uh, the first hole that we put in at Lahoma Central. We think we're going to be able to replicate that across uh, east-west and north-south. How far that goes, I don't know, but we've done a and slices up to about a kilometre and expanding. We've got a similar sort of philosophy that we've adopted um, another four Ks down along that strike to HEM2 Northeast. We've done AMT there. We've got similar sort of correlations. We've done the same sort of set of, um, of background information down at HEM2. HEM2 is a bit of a monster. It looks as though it's got a massive gravity anomaly and we're in the process of drilling that. So this often term use, you know, um, we're, we're in an exciting phase. We really are. Genuinely, we're looking to see us uncovering more massive sulfides and demi-seminated sulfides through this trend. And we've gone back and we've done a lot of research as well, Stuart. I mean, behind the scenes, there's certain information that you can rely upon heavily and you can validate, and there's good indicators. So the historical holes and the research that we've done suggests that this, this, this particular trend is a fertile opportunity for us to drill. Right, and obviously the, the choice to go straight to diamonds was to be able to scope out exactly how far these massive sulfides go so that we can then go back and and, uh, and, and be a bit more careful later on about uh, where we pick amongst uh, uh, the, the massive sulfide endowment, if I could put it like that. That's correct. I mean, this this um, the, the beauty of this particular um, opportunity is that we know historically that there were massive sulfides intercepted. What we've actually been able to do, and I think maybe it's lost in the, in the wash sometimes, is we're able to correlate that with the EM and the AMT techniques that we're applying. So where we see it in the core is where we expected to see it from the visuals. Now you lose that level of resolution if you get past about 500 metres, but certainly for the top 500 metres, you are going to snag things that you think you're going to snag. And we have an expectation that that will happen. What we'll just also need to do with that um, is down do some downhole EM so we can get you know uh, an understanding as to what might exist at depth. An important facet to understand is that Kabanga um, extends down to about 1.2 k's. Right. We're drilling about 300 metres. We're drilling about 500 metres. So what I'm trying to say is that I don't I don't think that we're going to tap out there. I think there's opportunities that would extend this. Now, what we're trying to do is to actually get our, our refinement around these drilling techniques and, and other um, uh, tools that we're using to make sure that when we start drilling the deeper holes, we've got a greater chance. Put down the probes, understand where the plates are, and start drilling towards them, get the right orientation. Sounds frustrating, but you know what? You're taking out all of the unknowns in an equation. You know, drilling is quite expensive, so you want to make sure that every metre you're drilling is in the right direction and gives you the best chance of hitting stuff. 
particularly in this part of Tanzania, we're, we're not exactly in the middle of nowhere, but we're talking uh, remote from uh, from all the population centres. I think we were talking before, the nearest big town is Mwanza over on Lake Victoria, which which is the other side of the uh, the region. That's correct. That that's become that that's a bit of a hub, a hub for many things. Um, you know, uh, preparation of samples, um, support service vehicles for drill rigs, drill rig companies, uh, technical guys, and and it is it's a, it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a recognised hub in that particular region. It's still about three hours away from where we are, but it's it well services where we are, and I think that the infrastructure generally will start to increase uh, and improve in and around where we are as we see the movement forward of um, Kabanga moving into production. Right. So I think it's reasonably well serviced. Okay. You're talking to me from Perth. I, I'm, I'm hoping you've got a reasonably solid uh, in-country in country team in Tanzania, which you must have. Oh, look, I, 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 again, <clears throat> these sorts of features sometimes get glossed over, but the answer is absolutely yes. Our chairman has been um, an, an identity in Tanzania in a good way. He's actually got um, good relationships, which we continue to refresh. Uh, we do have a beachhead there and a, a general manager uh, and um, a local geologist um, that are doing a sterling job. Um, we're very confident they've got the right sort of um, engagements with people happening and an understanding with the, with the drilling companies at this point in time, which is critically important. We meet the mining commissioners. We understand what they want. They want to see from us. They want to see work being done. And importantly, also, it's the inclusion of um, local peoples in the uh, in the soil campaigns, the pad preparation and opportunities for them to participate. You know, that's basically controlled by our team in Tanzania. So I'm happy to say that you know, that level of you know, social content um, consideration and local content engagement in any contracts, uh, we recognise and we, we try to do our best to accommodate. Well, obviously, yeah, uh, that's a big deal for the Tanzanian government. They want to see a lot of local uh, local participation in, in these kind of projects. Well, and, and as do we, as right. do we. At, at the end of the day, um, you know, we want to make sure that you know, people are uh, coming along for the ride with us. Uh, and I think it's very it's very important also that governments, um, and it does, support these sorts of initiatives because at the end of the day, they're going to be the net beneficiaries, which they should be. You know, their 16% interest in these mining projects is, is what's going to be putting them back into the country and start to unlock the endowment of mineral wealth that they've got. Right. Well, David Reiki, well done on what you, you achieve, your team have achieved. It's been, it's been a slow and steady wins the race progress towards the point we've reached now but um we're we're getting towards the exciting part where dr drill is telling us some interesting things so uh, we look forward to what happens next with uh, ada vale resources look thank you Stuart. and i think um investors uh, alike should be watching us very very closely over the next four to six weeks we've said this before but you know before the end of this financial year we should have some more results out all right david Rocky, thanks for joining stocks down under pleasure thank you Stuart. 